Hi, it's Derek. Today I'm going to be talking about Orlex foam, some of the stuff we have back here. Uh, we have had this in the, I guess, about the last five studios that we've been in. So I'm going to show you some tips on how you can make this stuff last. They built it pretty good, pretty robust. I'm not going to be talking today about exactly where to install it, what it's perfect for, what frequencies it helps or doesn't help. Um, there's some other great videos on that that you can go and search or even go to the Orlex site. I'm just talking about how you can mount it properly so that way if you need to leave, um, so if you have a home studio, you're looking to upgrade and go to a bigger studio, or if you are moving from one studio to another, uh, there's no reason for you to foam tack it or tube tack it to the wall and be done. So I will take you through a couple of steps here on what you can do to custom fit it to your studio and what we've done to, uh, to make five uh, different studio moves over about the last 12 years. So um, we've been able to take this with us. So our initial investment was not lost when we moved from one studio to the next. We are able to go ahead and take this with us and it's been something that's uh, it's, uh, done fairly well on keeping its shape and keeping its quality. And I'm going to show you what I've done to go ahead. Uh, we're now outfitting my studio office, um, or I guess my home office with this. And I'll show you how we're custom in installing this there. So here we're looking at some of the foam. Um, these are one foot by one foot or 12 inch, 12 inch uh, squares that we bought in a kit that was the burgundy and gray. I think we got three different kits that we put together to uh, outfit some of the different studios that we've put together. Um, what we've pretty much done is taken this pegboard and you have one side, um, even if you get the brown um, or the, the white sided, one side usually rough. And that's what you're going to want to tube tech to. So pretty much what we've done is we've gone in there. You can kind of see that there's some tube tack in there. And we have tacked that directly to the pegboard. So what we're able to do is cut the, uh, the piece of wood down just a little bit smaller than two foot wide and four foot tall. And then that way we tube tack it down and we can go and mount this up to a wall, pull this back a little bit, just drop a sheetrock screw right into the sheetrock and it hangs on the wall wherever you want it. You can also do this to hang on acoustic ceilings um, up above you and you can just hang it with wires or hooks from there. But then once you're done, you just unscrew those screws and take it to your next installment, next studio, next home office, whatever you're looking to do. There's another set of panels um, in different sizes that we've done. You can see here, this is just a one by one that we created. Here's a one by two. And then we also have some four by four panels there. Um, the four by fours went into our acoustic ceiling. Um, since there were four by four panels up there, we just pushed up, we left the original panels in there and we're able to just drop these right in above. So we had some uh, absorption wherever we needed to above our heads and treating the ceiling. Um, so there's a whole pile there of stuff that would have been left behind, but because we put it on pegboard, it came with us. Here are some of the finished panels that I've put into place. Um, these are the one by ones. What we're pretty much going to do um, is put a four inch or three inch, whatever it fits, so that way they custom fit. So I have this here and this here are twelves. Um, I did cut a two by four and put it in the corner, um, so that way I cannot have foam just colliding with one another. We don't have foam colliding with one another. Um, the panels I'm going to pop off and paint that either the burgundy color or paint it black so that uh, two by four in the corner just disappears. One by ones across as much as we can, but then we come to a section here that is a custom about three and a half inch, four inch piece here um, by about, I think that's about 24 or a little bit less. So we had to custom cut that piece. Um, and then coming down, we were able to custom cut, once again, um, another 2x4 piece here that's been cut down so that way it can um, separate a little bit and we're not colliding. Um, there will be a piece of wood trim that comes here and covers this metal for this sliding glass door. Um, pretty much what I'm standing in is my outside patio that has been converted over to my little home studio. Uh, we move down a little bit and we see this little piece here. Um, this is another custom cut piece because I started from the bottom. And then I started from the top and decided to meet in the middle so I'd only have one custom piece right here in the middle um, to have to worry about cutting. 
Um, and so that has a little bit of sim uh, symmetrical fashion there. These are custom cut from a 404 panels. There are, I guess, three of them up there that have been custom cut. Um, so that way they will fit in there. So we're about to hop back out into the garage to see our table saw work on how we actually cut this foam and keep it looking like a factory finish. So we're out here back in the shop and we're at the table saw. Um, some of the people online say, hey, take a turkey carver and cut it with the turkey carver. You can do that, but it's about as steady as your hand is and your foam's not gonna look all that great. You can take those joints and put those where you butt it up against the corner or whatever and try to hide some of that. But as we found over the years, the turkey carver will cut it. A razor blade or exacto knife will cut it, but it's not going to be real precise and straight. So we've decided to use a table saw and we take a piece of foam, invert another piece of foam on it and cut. So a lot of times we're cutting our, our left wall piece and our right wall piece at the same time. Um, if it's a small custom fit piece, then we have a little bit of sacrificial foam that a lot of times we can use over and over again. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the table saw and uh, show you how we cut some of our foam and show you some of the results. So you can see we went ahead and, you know, typically you wouldn't hold the camera while you use your table saw. Um, so that is our factory finish on this side. That is our table saw finish on the other side. Comes out really nice, really clean. That's ready to just go. You just bend back. There's that hole there. You can mount your uh, screw through. Um, and the same thing works if you're taking it across the saw like this. You just go ahead and lay in a sacrificial piece of foam on top there or your mirror image piece of foam. As you can see here, we've gotten all four or five cuts out of that piece there. A couple of cuts out of that piece there. So it just depends on... Um, how much spare foam you have to be able to do that. Um, but a lot of times we do it mirror image to where we're taking the left wall piece and the right wall piece at the exact same time. Um, one of my custom pieces came off of this board here. Um, so we just went ahead and sliced it on down. So here's another look at a table saw finish. Comes off really nice. Um, sometimes what we'll do is take the table saw if this is going um, and we want to hide this piece of, bead, of uh, pegboard a little bit. What we'll do is we'll set the table saw height at an eighth of an inch. So all we're doing is cutting off an eighth of an inch of the eighth of, eighth of an inch board. So that way that kind of disappears. Um, or you can paint that black and it kind of disappears. So that is kind of the synopsis of some of the tools and tips that you can do with your Orlex foam to prolong its life. To make it usable in multiple studios, um, you're able to mount it on the pegboard, install it, reinstall it, move it, and you're not just stuck to wherever you took that foam tack or tube tack. Um, those are good products. That, that is what we use to attach everything. Over probably 10, 12 years ago, we attached with a tube tack to this pegboard. Use the rough side. Use a sacrificial piece of foam whenever you're cutting it. So I hope this video was helpful. Hope that you um, enjoy installing your Orlex foam. I'm sure this would work with other foam products. Um, a lot of the stuff does get expensive. And we'd like you to be able to take it to the next studio, the next project shop, or if you, um, if you wanted to upgrade to something even more expensive and you can only afford Orlex at this time, then you can go ahead and you know, sell this on Craigslist or eBay as ready to go, ready to install tiles. Just takes four screws for each panel and you're good to go. Thank you for watching. We'd appreciate a like or a share. Have a great one. God bless.